Okay, let's have a look at change in enthalpy and Hess's law. So the law of conservation of energy tells us that we can't create or destroy energy. We can only transfer it or transform it. So for any chemical reaction, the change in enthalpy, whether it's giving the heat out or taking it in, in going from reactants to products, will always be constant. And this is regardless of the steps that are involved. Let's look at this statement in an example. So our first reaction, we've got barium in a solid form reacting with hydrochloric acid to give us barium chloride and hydrogen gas. And this has a change in enthalpy value for this reaction of minus 538 kilojoules per mole. Now we can also break this reaction down into two parts. So the second reaction, we're putting barium with our water, and that's giving us barium hydroxide and hydrogen gas. So we're getting one of our products out of this particular reaction. And the change in enthalpy value for this particular reaction is minus 428 kilojoules per mole. Now we can take this barium hydroxide, one of the products from the first reaction, and add it to our HCl, our hydrochloric acid, and we form our second product of our first reaction, the barium chloride, and we've got water in a liquid form here as well. Now you'll notice we've gone through two stages. If we add these two reactions together, these two parts cancel out, as does this side and this side. So what we're left with here is our barium solid form plus our two lots of hydrochloric acid to give us our barium chloride and our hydrogen gas. So even though we've gone through the two steps, we have exactly the same reaction as our first reaction. Our third reaction had a change in enthalpy of minus 110 kilojoules per mole. Now according to what we set up the top here, our change in enthalpy for the complete reaction should equal the change in enthalpy when we add them together for our sequence of reactions. Let's see if this is the case. We get minus 428 kilojoules per mole for the second reaction, and we add that to the minus 110 for our third reaction, and we get the value of minus 538 kilojoules per mole. So if this stands, this value here should be equal to and it is equal to the change in enthalpy for our first reaction. So this, what we've set up here, is correct. And this is known as Hess's Law. So if we define Hess's Law, we say the change in enthalpy, or the enthalpy change for a particular chemical reaction, is independent of the path of those reactions to get from reactants to products. So we can either do it in the one-step form, or we can do it in multiple steps. And this becomes important because there are many reactions we can't measure the change in enthalpy for. And we need to go through a series of reactions to calculate that change in enthalpy. Let's take another example. I have three reactions here, and we're going to...